Good morning ladies and gentlemen from my workshop. Uh, there's been a bit of a lull in proceedings uh, over the last what week or so I suppose. Um, had a bit of a break from the workshop. Um, watched a Grand Prix at Abu Dhabi which turned out to be quite interesting. And uh, now I'm back in a rather chilly workshop to get on with uh, the odds and sods part of the job. Um, today I should be making a start on the uh, bed supports. Um, not entirely happy with the finish that I got on the on the base which rests on the lathe bed. Uh, so I'm going to fly cut that flat uh, so that I have a perfect datum. Um, drill the through holes for the clamp mount and uh, drill and tap the holes for um, the angle brackets which um, align the bed supports. A um, bit of turning for making thumb screws and what have you and um, whatever else I can cram into today. Let's head over to the mill and get started. Here we are then over at the mill. The bed supports I've uh, put in the vise and clamped up. Um, lined up the ends uh, which are a reasonable finish on there and I've lined them up using a, a fingernail to check whether there's any um, overlap. This is the face I'm going to fly cut whether it comes up very well on the on the camera but it's a bit a um, bit of a ripply finish so um, I'm going to fly cut that uh, the fly cutter is already installed as you can see and I've uh, we'll got it ready to take the first cut I'm hoping to take off as little as possible um, and uh, I'll bring you back in a minute when I've switched everything on and uh, the noise level has increased I've got everything switched on now, as you can possibly hear, the VFT is running. I'll um, start the spindle up and then uh, traverse with the um, power feed along the x-axis and see how we get on. That's more or less in the centre. So, here we go. Cleaning up far better, at least at this end. 
So, call that done. Right, while this is clamped here like this, oh yes, it is nice and smooth, and uh, these are nicely lined up. Um, I'll set the DRO and then I'm going to drill and tap the mounting holes for the braces on this end and then I'll take it out of the vise, use some thinner parallels and mount it on this face so I can drill down the clearance holes here. Um, Or maybe even drill through here, so, so I, I can take the parallels out quite easily. Uh, yes, I think I'll drill and tap these holes. These are not critical. Um, obviously, I'd like to get them as close as possible to the drawing spec, but uh, within uh, or up to half a mil, I would think, would be quite adequate because there's a certain amount of wiggle room there. It's just for the clamps. Okay. Another setup required. Back in a minute. Okay, you've got a spotting drill mounted in the collet chuck. I've set up my X0 on the end of the piece here and my Y0 on this face. I need to drill two uh, clamping holes. One 39mm from this end and another 20mm uh, further on uh, and obviously a matching pair in the other piece um, and from this end I need uh, two holes drilled one 39mm from um, that, no wrong way round that's 39mm and that's a further 20mm along and at the other end here I need one 15mm in and uh, a further 25mm in and obviously a matching pair here and uh, that'll involve a little bit of maths because this uh, the overall length is 167 um, and obviously I've just set it up 0, 1 end um, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I'll do some maths in a minute. But for the moment, I'll just wind this across so that uh, I'm 6mm in. Oops, that was too far. I do like to get it spot on if I can. And I haven't. Every time I tighten the gear up, it shifts it a few microns. There we are, 6mm. Hex speed, 39. And we shot again.
on the button. And there's a check. Driven on that as well. Do these as well. So we'll go across 12. Thank you, 18. Change the spotting drill out for, uh, in this case, um, six mil clearance um, drill. And when I come to do these, these will be for um, six mil tapping size, five point two or thereabouts. Okay, I'll do the drilling and the tapping off camera because that's uh, even more boring than the last lot to watch. Uh, back on the bench, I've finished uh, fettling these, drilling, tapping where necessary, and I've, I've fitted them together temporarily. And these obviously go on the lathe bed. So that one out of the way. And the clamps come up underneath, and the bolts obviously tighten down, pull the um, clamp up, and secure the bracket to the lathe bed itself. Um, I'm going to have to stop uh, this afternoon because I have a bit of a migraine coming on, but. Uh, 
uh, I think perhaps tomorrow I'll come out and uh, explain how I'm going to measure up, mark out the holes for the uh, um, workpiece positioning and uh, finish drilling the holes through for the tie rod. But that's it for now. Now as I said a couple of days ago, I have to determine the height uh, at which the stylus um, will intersect the centre line of the um, piece which I'm going to copy, or which I want to copy. And, and to do that, as you see, I've taken off the compound slide, um, revealing the boss here, which I've forgotten about, so I'm going to have to mill a recess in the in the base hopefully there'll be enough meat and uh, it's resting on the cross slide and this will follow the pattern on here like this now the stylus will need to be obviously on the center line of the copy piece um, and so I'm going to have to determine the height at which the center line of the copy piece is placed. Now in order to do that I could just mark it as I am with the stylus uh, which may not necessarily be perfectly concentric with the mounting um, but I've determined that I'm going to um, measure from the bed to the top of the um, slide and then uh, deduct half the width of the um, slide portion here, which is five millimeters. Um, I think. Let me just check that. Nope. Six millimeters. Um, and then I'll set these up again in the mill, set the DRO from the uh, lowest portion uh, where it sits on the bed. Yeah. And measure up um, to here. It doesn't matter, um, the horizontal distance is not critical. In fact, uh, ideally it would be set a little towards the rear to give a bit more room for manoeuvre. However, that's for a later date. I'll get the um, height gauge and um, start some measuring. Right, I've got the uh, height gauge out. Uh, uh, I placed it on the bed, lowered the foot, and uh, zero it. Raise it up to the top of the slide. And read that off, and it is 78.92. Write that down. 78.92. Now we want to take 6 off that. 92. 72.92. That's the height of the centre line above the bed. Simple as that. Now I've got to take the battery out of here, put it away again and wait for the next blue moon. However, very useful bit of kit and a bit of an indulgence on my part, but there we go. Uh, okay, well, strip it all down, put the blade back together and uh, Take this over to the mill and drill another hole or two.
Uh, and by way of a short addendum, I should add that uh, although I initially showed this um, stylus, uh, the round jobby, uh, I'm actually going to make up a, a new stylus uh, using this thin, small roller bearing. It gives me the uh, additional bit of uh, leeway. For example, if I'm following a Morse taper, if it's not quite on the center line of the Morse taper, you'll get a weird curve. So even if the Morse taper is very slightly off tangential vertically it will still follow uh, the path of the tangent. Perhaps I didn't explain that too well but uh, when I've made the carrier I'll uh, do another explanation and it should all become clear.